Well, hello friends. So in this video, I want to unbox a uh, gaming mouse. Hopefully I bought to upgrade my existing um, mouse that I actually quite love. Um, so what's in front of you, this is my old mouse, is the Razer Viper Ultimate. And I, I bought this mouse in 2020 and that's almost four years in of almost daily use and uh, this mouse never let me down okay for the most part you can see the wear the high wear area where i use this mouse for editing video editing for gaming and uh, for all general purpose web browsing um, this is rubber and as you can see after about three four years i actually wear out this rubber area i'm a left hand user so this area is where I'll this where where I'll this this and over here where my thumb rests. I actually had to replace the PTFE feet once. So this is a brand new PTFE feet. The old one actually worn out, it worn flat, and it was affecting the movement. So I got a new one. As you can see, this is a wear when the old one actually kind of wore out and kind of affected the use. So this mouse has been well used and uh, till this day, it still works great. Uh, it gets about probably now maybe 50 hours of battery life so I can use it for a little less than a week before I have to actually plug the dongle uh, into the USB cable to charge it while using it. Um, this charging port actually kind of stopped working. So when I try to put this on here, it sometimes charges, sometimes doesn't, so it's kind of finicky now. So the only way for me to properly charge it is through the micro USB cable, which is proprietary actually. You can't use any regular USB cable to charge it because it doesn't fit in this, into this little hole. So I think it's about time for me to get a upgrade. And uh, my previous mouse before the Viper Ultimate is actually a Logitech G305, which Logitech still sells. Now I think this is a great mouse for you know for your laptop and very light gaming. Like in terms of serious gaming, the 305 is not comfortable. Like if you see here, it's much smaller compared to the Viper Ultimate. It's much shorter and uh, um, it's slightly narrower. So I I have a medium sized hand and my palm just fits naturally, and I use this kind of grip. I think it's called palm grip. It just fits naturally here on the Viper Ultimate, but if I go to the G305, uh, unfortunately, it left a lot of space to be empty, which this kind of claw grip, I'm not very good with, and uh, I don't feel comfortable using this grip. So the 305 is not comfortable for serious use, at least for my purpose, for my hand shape, and for my preference. So that's why I upgraded and I never looked back. I did a few videos on how to, you know, access the battery and replace it if you need to, as well as how to change the feet if you need to, and also how to clean the mouse uh, by opening this hole up and clean all the hairs. If you have lots of pads in your home, the hair gets accumulated in here, so it needs to be cleaned. But it's about time, you know, that I get a new mouse with slight upgrade. And for that purpose, I actually chose the same company, the Razer, and I chose a mouse that's actually quite a lot cheaper than the Viper Ultimate at launch. This mouse right now sells for only $69, okay? This one, when I bought it with the, with the, uh, with the dongle, it's $149, it's not cheap. So this is half the price. Uh, what's missing is it doesn't come with a dongle, and you can't use this mouse with a wired mode while charging it because this mouse uses a regular AA battery just like the G305 right here, okay? Um, so let's just open it up and take a quick physical look. My understanding is not much has changed in terms of the shape. Um, they cheaped out in a few areas, but I think in terms of my use and my preference, it might actually work better, okay? Uh, there's the user manual with your, you know, razor sticker as usual. Um, gives you a few options on how to change and access different functions on this mouse. Kind of cool print, a black paper with silver prints. The text is kind of hard to read. Um, 
But anyway, like it's a mouse, so there shouldn't really be anything, um, let's see, anything to it. There is a low battery warning, so if there's 5% battery left, there's a little red light is gonna blink on the uh, top of the uh, scoring wheel. That's when you know, you know, get a fresh battery ready, but it's not gonna die on you right away. You probably can still use it for a whole one, two days before the battery completely dies. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, so let's take a look at the mouse. So it's nice that they do come with a battery included. Looks like an energizer. Okay, so we're gonna take the Energizer Max, not for retail use, okay. And that looks like everything in there. Um, so this is the mouse itself. It's actually super lightweight, okay. Um, this thing on the website, they actually claim um, it's got, let's see, let's see the weight. I have it open on the website. Uh, so this mouse weights 59 grams without the battery. And this thing weights, this is the Viper Ultimate, okay? It weights 74 grams with the building battery. And uh, so right off the bat, this feels like nothing, literally. And this feels almost like nothing, okay? So with the battery though, uh, this thing comes to about 82 grams. So in terms of the weight, it's just a few more grams. Uh, so like eight grams more heavier than the Viper Ultimate, okay? I did not go to the Viper Ultimate V2 because I kind of like a extended battery um, usage on this with the just regular hyper speed uh, uh, use. This gets 280 hours, so I don't have to charge it as often, which as to my preference, okay? And this is a dongle. It's kind of the same sized dongle as the Viper Ultimate. Almost exactly the same thing it looks like, okay? So this is a 2.4 gigahertz Viper V3 HS Hyper Speed. Um, and this is the original dongle for the Viper Ultimate. So you know what, right off the bat, I'm actually just gonna plug this onto the dongle here. And oh, guess what? It doesn't even come with a USB cable, like nothing's included. It's just the battery, the dongle, and the mouse itself. For this, oh, so it automatically detected my mouse right here. And it does look like, um, let's see, let's see if I can access the battery here. Okay, battery, negative, positive. Installation is pretty uh, straightforward. You just align this. And this feet, it's uh, it's quite thick. Um, it's elevated quite a lot, you can feel it. Um, but this area is not elevated. So I think this is just to protect the sensor area. The elevated, most elevated area are the, the three feet here. And hopefully they have replacements for those. PTFE, which is like a super slick plastic coating. Um, turn on the power. So once you turn on the power, it turns green. Let's see if I'm able, yeah, I'm able to use it actually right away. It feels quite smooth, okay. Um, let's see. And uh, quite interestingly, I think right off the bat, it's actually slightly more comfortable um, than the Viper Ultimate for me because the factory spec, okay, factory spec, this is, about one to two millimeters slimmer than the Viper Ultimate. The Viper Ultimate had four buttons here. This one I cheaped out, it only used this button, so left-hand users, you know, you are all set, but I'm a left hand, so I usually just use my, um, this little finger to control the two clicks here. And uh, um, it's actually better it's more tactile compared to the uh, the old Viper Ultimate because this thing is uh, is it's kind of recessed inside, but this thing is is more protruding. So in terms of for me to press it with my little finger right here, it's actually easier, which is nice. Okay, so um, I again the only game I play is Overwatch. I use this to announce my ultimate charge and use this for voice, um, and uh, it's it's really easy for me to actually reach both buttons. Okay, no trouble there. And obviously the biggest advantage for the Viper Ultimate 
is I can just use those two buttons with my thumb, which is really nice. But again, I can live with that just like the 305 where the button is on the side, also very easy to press. All right, so a quick, you know, physical spec comparison. Um, I'm gonna have the new mouse here. This is the Viper V3. This one and this one have the same height, 127.1 millimeters. Um, in terms of the width, this one is narrower. This one is uh, almost uh, 2.1 millimeter narrower than the Viper Ultimate. So it's slimmer, uh, let's just call it that. Um, but do you feel it? Barely. It almost feels like it's the same width. Uh, what's also interesting is the height actually increased. The height increased to two millimeters. So in terms of the fatness, the bump, this thing is two millimeters higher. And um, you know, what is my honest opinion is it actually is hugging my palm. I use a palm grip. It's, if you're using a palm grip, the Viper V3 is definitely more comfortable compared to the Viper Ultimate that came out, you know, four, four years ago, okay? It's more comfortable. Um, and for my left-hand use, ambidextrous, there's no difference. The only difference is the cheap out, cheaped out and emitted button over here, but I can live with that and just use my, um, use my little finger to press the buttons on the side. So again, really there isn't any difference. And uh, physical appearance wise, they got rid of that little ridge over here. And uh, I think it's for a good thing because this ridge catches a lot of dirt and there are really no point here. Um, in terms of cleaning, ease of cleaning, I think this one actually wings. It's got less gap over here uh, for the buttons, uh, so less dirt. And also the dirt is not gonna go as easy to go in here compared to this one where there's a big gap over there um, and uh, no physical divider compared to the V3. So the V3 is gonna be easier to clean compared to the Viper Ultimate, um, which is my old mouse. And uh, in terms of the scoring wheel, they look uh, pretty much identical, okay? Scoring wheel is identical. The click, it feels like the same switch. And uh, also the switch here. The sound is different, but this one is more tactile. This one had a little more uh, click. Um, it, it has more press before the click is registered for the old mouse. So the new mouse, I think, in terms of tactile feel, the new mouse has improved quite a lot. Now, another major difference is this one uses Razer's improved mechanical switch, um, and this one uses Razer's optical switch. The optical switch is rated at 70 million clicks before it uh, you know, goes bad. And the optical, the mechanical one here is registered for 60 million clicks. Are they gonna wear out before the mouse, you know, go die and the battery goes out? Probably never, okay? Um, what I really hate about Logitech G Pro that I had before is the switch they use is really cheap quality, inferior made in China switch, which are just horrible. It, ha it develops double click issue sometimes with, even within warranty and sometimes out of warranty. So I had like two replacement Razer uh, Logitech G Pros. I made a video and rant about it. It's horrible. I have, full, I have full confidence on the Razer mechanical switches compared to the Logitech. Um, this feels like a quality switch and actually the tactile click I really like. So I think this mouse is gonna last me for quite a long time. All right, guys, so it's about three months since I bought my Razer Viper V3 um, Hyperspeed wireless gaming mouth. And uh, um, the last section, I did my first impression when I unboxed the gaming mouse. And uh, after about three months of use, and also with the um, occasional use of the Razer Viper Ultimate, which I bring to my work to use as uh, with my laptop, I can come back and give you guys a, uh, a final conclusion on what I think about the new Viper V3 um, hyperspeed, okay? So 
in terms of use, the more I use this mouth, the more I feel like this is designed for palm grips. Okay, so uh, for people who actually like to have their palm touching the top of the mouse, the Viper V3 is definitely a lot better and a lot more comfortable than the Viper Ultimate wireless mouth. Um, the reason being that additional, you know, additional 2.1 millimeter or something like that uh, of raised bump, it's actually pretty significant when you actually lay your hands on the mouse, okay? So the Viper Ultimate, I think for palm grip, it's gonna be a little bit tough because um, it's very low. So for um, claw gripping, this is like the perfect mouse. Uh, it's also very lightweight. The weight of this mouse is slightly heavier than this. When I detach the cable right now, it's just charging because the battery was low. Um, and uh, you definitely feel that weight on the Viper V3 because it uses a regular AA battery. And those AA batteries are usually much heavier um, unless you use a lithium battery in here. The lithium battery also costs quite a lot more. However, I believe it's gonna last at least three to five times longer than a traditional alkaline AAA battery, okay? So you have the option for it to go pretty much the same weight as a Viper Ultimate wireless, um, you know, mouse or whatever. But I think the biggest difference for me that I want to tell you guys is that additional raised area is better for palm grip users. It doesn't really matter for claw gripping um, because I think, you know, you would not be bothered by this bump. However, for palm gripping and you want to be able to touch the top of the mouse, the Viper V3 is a better choice. Now, the battery life is another thing that I'm really impressed about the uh, Viper V3, okay? Hyperspeed. With a AA alkaline battery, you know, just your regular cheapest AA battery, it lasted me two months literally two months with daily use before I had the need to recharge or actually switch the battery, put a fresh battery in here. Now, if you use a uh, NIMH um, battery, you can just recharge that battery. You have two batteries, you use one, and when it goes low, you can recharge it again, put the fresh one in and, and exchange them. That would be the best way to go. However, the battery life is really, really impressive, okay? For me, a daily computer user, I got about two months of use out of the Viper V3, single charge. For the Viper Ultimate, um, I usually get about one to two weeks before I had to plug it in and do a full charge uh, for it to last another one to two weeks of daily use and occasional gaming. Um, so that's the actual you know, battery life, the, the battery life, at least for me, this easily wins in terms of, you know, the battery life compared to the Viper V3, like uh, the Viper Ultimate. So if you don't like charging your mouth quite a lot, definitely get the Viper V3. And uh, uh, the last thing, of course, is price. Now, I don't know how much the Viper Ultimate sells for now because I think it's discontinued. So you might be able to get this for the same price as this, but this thing is about 50 bucks. You know, literally costs nothing for a gaming mouse that gives you great performance. I believe it goes to as high as 1000 Hertz sampling rate, but if you do keep the sampling rate low, you can get even more battery life out of this mouse. Um, so yeah, I was pleasantly surprised and also impressed by the performance of this value oriented, you know, uh, mouse from Razer. And um, at the end of the day, it really comes down to your actual use before you can decide on which mouth you're going to get. And uh, the first thing first I would say is comfort. If you're a palm grip user, definitely consider the Viper V3 more so than the Viper Ultimate because it's just that much more slimmer, okay? Or like lower slimmer profile. Uh, if you're a claw gripper, it doesn't really matter. So if you're a claw gripper um, and you value battery life, you hate charging, get the Viper V3. 
Um, you don't mind charging, you want the best performance possible and also the lighter weight and also additional buttons and also um, nice comfortable rubber grips. The Viper Ultimate still is probably one of the best well-designed gaming mouth uh, if you buy it in better condition or like even new. I think this is definitely a great value to consider, okay? So end of the day, this video was for Viper V3, but I did want to compare this to the, the previous best performing mouse, the Viper Ultimate. Um, and I think the Viper Ultimate still has its, you know, um, its place currently, like in the modern day, 2024, July, okay? This is still a very capable mouse. And in a lot of areas, it performs way better than the Viper V3. Um, but then again, value-wise, the longevity-wise, you just cannot go wrong with the Viper V3. It never had any issue, no interference issues whatsoever, even used in the office settings. So this is definitely a great mouse for about around 50 bucks. And you can probably get this used for like even less than $40. Great value, okay? Um, Longevity wise, one last thing I want to touch is mechanical switch. I do not know how long it's going to last, but it's already been uh, three months. It's been reliable. There's no double clicking issue to be found anywhere. So yeah, fingers crossed. Hopefully this would last quite a long time for a me mechanical switch mouse. And that's it. So if you guys found this helpful, uh, feel free to give me a thumbs up and also subscribe subscribe to my channel i have a lot more how to gadget reviews coming out you know constantly so thanks again and stay tuned and take care